viewing file information. Simply go to your finder. Uh, I'm going to go to my music folder. So I'm going to type in music. I'm going to right click or control click on the music folder. Stroll down to get info. Um, at the top, you're going to see how large the file is. It's 600.8 megabytes. Um, you'll also see the last time it was modified, um, which was December 14th. Um, you'll see the arrows, which gives you uh, more in-depth information. Um, once you click on each arrow, you click on general. It'll tell you the kind of folder it is, the size it is, where it's located, uh, when it was created, the, the last time it was modified, uh, the label, if any labels are on it, um, uh, and, and if it's a shared or a locked folder. Um, all the arrows pretty much do the same thing. They're going to give you more information um, in regards to the file. Um, you do have um, to click on, you, you can click on the lock and make changes um, if need be to any of the uh, folder, folder information. But that's pretty much how you get information or view information regarding a file. It allows you to add uh, different cr criteria into your search um, when pulling up folders. Um, you want to go to your finder and let's pull up or create a new smart folder. Over here you have the add and, and save criteria. I don't currently have any smart folders on my computer. Uh, I'm going to create one now. I go to add a criteria. Uh, we'll stay with the kind. Uh, with, we'll go with the created date. It's going gonna, it's gonna to then change to within the last. So I can then pull up anything that I created, let's say within the last three days. Um, and, and there here and here you have everything that I've created in the last three days it's gonna put that into a folder for me once I click save uh, I'm gonna name it um, week two also uh, and then I'm gonna save it um, by clicking on the up arrow you can save it to uh, either your save searches or your desk drive, I mean your desktop, I'm sorry, your downloads or your music for whichever folder or whichever place you want to put it, you can. I'll just leave it at my save searches, click save, and that's pretty much how uh, smart folders work. Making a stack is a very cool tool because I can actually see what's in the folder without having to open the folder. Um, in order to do that, um, I just take the folder, drag it down to the dock on the right side of the divider, drop it in. Um, once I do that, um, I single click on it and it actually stacks for me. Um, I can actually see everything that's actually inside of this folder without having to open the folder. Um, if I right click or control click on the folder, um, <clears throat> I can change the way I sort it, I can change the way it's displayed, and I can also uh, change the way I view it. Um, I can view the content inside the folder as a grid as a list and as a fan. Um, if I change it to a list and click on it, everything will be uh, in, in the list format. Um, if I change it to a grid, uh, everything will be in a grid. And if I change it to a fan, everything will go back um, to a fan. Uh, this only works if you um, drop it on the bottom dock on the bottom dock if your dock is position in other words if your dock is positioned at the bottom of your computer if it's positioned any other way it won't work
Um, that's pretty much um, making a stack. The dock. Uh, my dock is positioned at the bottom of my computer. Um, right here you'll see a divider. Uh, to the left of the divider are going to be all your applications and programs. And to the right of the divider is going to be pretty much everything else. All your minimized programs, your trash can, your documents, um, everything else is your folders. Everything else is going to be positioned to the right side of your computer of your divider I'm sorry um, by right by right clicking on the divider you can actually change um, a few preferences I would go to dock preferences and here you can change the position on, on the screen you can change it to the left or go to the bottom or you can change it to the right um, you can change um, the magnification um, of your uh, of the icons um, as you scroll over them like as of now you see how they are they just kinda come up I can actually make them uh, I can magnify them make them larger so that when I scroll over them now they actually are pretty big um, that's, that's a preference um, or you can actually change the size of the whole dot by um, I can make it smaller by scrolling over the small or I can make it large uh, by making by scrolling over to, to large, um, I can actually also hide um, the entire dock. Um, as of now, you don't see the dock. Um, but if I take my mouse and go all the way to the bottom of the computer, it'll actually come back up. Um, it's that's totally preference. It's pretty much up to you. Whatever makes you comfortable. Um, you can actually change the position of the things that are in your dock like if you want to take the safari and change the position of it and you know just move it anywhere that you want to move it on the left side of, on the left side of the divider um, you can do so you do see the spotlights here at the bottom they actually indicate what's running um, on your computer uh, so if your spotlight is lit up under something, you you actually know that it's it's on and running. Um, you as I scroll over the items in the dock, um, I can actually see the names. Uh, as I scroll over each one, it actually tells me the name of whatever the icon is that I actually scroll over. Um, that's that's pretty much the dock. It's, it's it's actually a great shortcut to actually get into your applications. Um, one more thing you can actually um, go in your finder in your finder window and go to your applications and you can um, manipulate what you actually put in your dock um, if you want to put your system preferences in your dock you can put your system preferences in your dock using force quit uh, is very simple um, if a program is hung up or is running and you don't want it to run and you trying to quit it and it won't quit uh, just scroll over to the Apple uh, go down to force quit click on force quit it'll show you the, the programs that you actually have running that you don't and if you don't want them running um, just click on it click on force quit um, and it'll actually stop the program from work, from running for you. Using Spotlight, a very cool, very ch nice shortcut, um, allows you to access things on your computer very quickly. Um, the uh, easy way to do it will be to click on the magnifying glass um, in the right corner, and it'll come up Spotlight or Another easy way would be to just command click on any in any program that you're in. This works. Uh, command click, and let's say you wanted to pull up your uh, music folder. Again, uh, you just click, just type in music, and click on the folder, and it comes right up every time.
increasing Mac security uh, can be done by simply going to your system preferences I'm going to spotlight it and go there uh, to my system preferences then I go to security and privacy click on my security and privacy and I see four tabs general fire vault, firewall and, pri and privacy um, <clears throat> you, you basically to, to access anything here you would need to unlock it first uh, to in order to make changes um, it, general deals with requiring passwords um, your login information, administrator information, uh, log out after logging out after a certain amount of time, um, automatically update, update and safe download list, um, disable re restarting to Safari when your screen is locked, and disable remote control infrared receiver. You can actually make those changes from here. Um, the Fire Vault tab actually deals with encrypting and decrypting your files so that a hacker couldn't come in or somebody broke into your computer they couldn't come in and just access access your files it actually encrypts and decrypts um, automatically for you um, if you make those changes um, the firewall actually blocks uh, people from actually accessing accessing your computer from another computer um, so uh, it blocks all incoming connections to this computer um, you can you have the option to turn it on or off totally up to you uh, privacy um, you can enable uh, the, the different apps to know your location like your where you are you know your the, the actual location you can enable that or disable it it's up to you and then you can also send a diagnostic and usage data to Apple that's totally because it's, it's private it's up to you. you you have the option to turn it on or off um, it's totally up to you but that's pretty much how you increase your Mac security very simple um, all I do is I'm going to spotlight system preferences uh, in order to make any changes um, as far as what I want my what I want my computer to do for me I just go to anyone and just access it like let's say for instance I wanted to change the sound uh, change something dealing with my speakers or the sound or if I wanted to add something I would go to sound and I click on uh, sound effects uh, I can change my alerts here uh, my sound effects here uh, the volume of my alerts uh, the output volume uh, I can make any I can make the computer pretty much my computer. Rico's computer is pretty much is what I'm doing here. Um, and you just do that from the um, system preferences bar. Just go in and make whatever changes you need to. In order to change the desktop picture, um, you're gonna I'm gonna spotlight system preferences. Command click command space bar I'm sorry system preferences I'm gonna type system I put in the S and it automatically came up so I'm gonna to go to system preferences here uh, then I'm gonna to go to desktop and screensaver click on desktop and screensaver um, you see on the left here your, your options of where your where some pictures are um, you can I can go to the to my desktop pictures um, if I want or I can go to my regular iPhotos um, I can just click on any photo and it'll change it to my um, it'll change my desktop picture to that uh, in order to put it back I just go get the picture uh, that I had there and just drag it back and it changes it back very simple energy saver options actually gives me uh, options so that my computer can uh, save energy I go there by uh, system preferences so I'm going to spotlight system preferences command spacebar and then I'm going to type in system or SY and then I click on system preferences I go to energy saver click on energy saver and I have the options 
um, of how I want it to react with my battery my, when I'm running on battery and when, when I'm running on power ad adapter. I can put my computer to sleep and I can put my display to sleep. Um, I have the option of doing both or, or neither one. Um, it's, it's totally up to me or totally up to the user. Um, then you can put the hard disk to sleep when possible. I mean, you have different options of what you want your computer to do to actually save energy. All of the options are totally up to you.